Hey fellow collectors, thanks for joining me again today for another unboxing and review video. Instead of doing the normal prop review today, I thought I'd show you guys this new tripod mount I got, which is the Manfrotto 502AH. When I'm not collecting props, I love taking photos. So for the past little while, I've been using my old school tripod mount, and this is the Manfrotto 46RC2. This is really great for taking photos because it gives you a lot of fine tune control over where you'd like to position your camera. But unfortunately, it is pretty terrible for taking videos because it gives you no control whatsoever over panning or tilting. And that's where this comes in. Before purchasing it, I took a look online and there are quite a number of positive reviews, so I thought I'd throw my two cents in as well. But the model that I happen to have purchased is the AH model, which is suitable for my photo tripod that I currently own. Which means that it has a flat base. There is another model which has a ball joint specifically tailored to video tripods. So please base your decision on the existing tripod that you currently own or the tripod that you're looking to purchase in the future. One big difference that I noticed already looking, uh, looking at the box is that it does say that it's made in China, whereas all the other Manfrotto products I own say that they're made in Italy. So I'm curious to see if there is a quality difference there and I'll let you guys know further in in the video. But for now, please stay tuned while I do a quick unboxing of this product. So the box itself is pretty simple. There's not very much to see here. Just some artwork on the front and back and the Manfrotto logo on the sides. And on the top it describes what the tripod is that you're grabbing. So opening it up. So the first thing on the top we have some documentation. some supportive cardboard. The arm for the head. And the tripod head itself. Which is pretty massive. And as you can see it's a pretty big box but there's absolutely nothing else inside of it. And here you have it. So the tripod head, the arm, and some documentation. So I'll take a day or two to kind of play around with it and I'll come back at you with my initial impressions of the 502 AH. So I've had a full day to play around with the head and I wanted to go over three things with you guys. The first being build materials, the second being usage, and the third being my overall impressions of the head. Taking a look at build materials, we see that Manfrotto used three main types of materials to construct the head. The first and major type of material being aluminum. The entire frame and this bridging system are all made from aluminum, as is the camera mounting plates, the arm and the arm mount. This control ring for the panning drag system is also aluminum, as are various other components found throughout the head. The second type of material I wanted to touch on is a common type of hard plastic that we find in everyday items. The arm tightening knob, the camera plate tightening knob, the tilt lock, and the pan lock are all made from this plastic. And the third material I wanted to mention is a soft touch or rubber-like material. The surface of the camera mounting plates, the outside of the fluid system for the tilt, and the grip on the arm are all representative of this type of material. And there are various other materials spread throughout the head, such as this brass camera locking pin. In terms of usage, the mount is actually quite easy to use and to control. There are six knobs on the head, and we'll take a look at what each one of them does. The first two knobs are used for tightening components. Here we have the arm tightening knob. Unscrewing it allows me to either change the angle of the arm, like so, or mount the arm to the other side of the head. The second knob allows me to slide the camera plate either forwards or backwards. 
and if your camera happens to be wider than the plate is, Manfrotto thoughtfully included a ratcheting system so you can still manage to secure the plate to the frame. And there's a built-in mechanism which prevents the plate from sliding out and off the back. To remove it, you'll have to press this release button. Manfrotto also includes two screws on the mounting plate, a quarter inch screw and this 3 8 inch attachment screw. And this is the brass locking pin I had previously mentioned. I only use the quarter inch screw for my DSLR, so to remove the 3 8 inch screw, you'll need to take out this rubber stopper and slide the screw out. And as other reviewers have mentioned, you can conveniently store it in one of the accessory threads on either side. For tilt control, the first knob is the lock, which simply allows you to lock the head and prevent it from tilting. Right now it's locked, and to unlock it, you simply turn it counterclockwise. The second is the fluid drag system, allowing me to control the tension for the tilt. Here's what it looks like at maximum drag. And this is at least amount of drag. As you can see, the tilt has memory to it, so it's self-leveling. We'll lock the tilt for a sec as we take a look at panning. The pan lock essentially does the same thing as the tilt lock. Clockwise for lock, and counterclockwise for unlock. Here's panning at max drag. and least amount of drag. And last but not least, there's a fluorescent leveling bubble that's built into the tripod head as well, which I found quite useful allowing me to make quick tripod adjustments in the field. During the intro, you already saw one of the videos I took with this mount, and if you give me a sec, I'll show you guys additional footage taking a closer look at the control and fluidity I was able to achieve with the 502AH. These were the first two videos I took with this new mount and have no stabilization applied to them. Overall, I'm impressed by how easy the head was to control for my first time out with it. With a little practice, I'm sure you'll be able to take full advantage of the bridging technology Manfrotto built into the 502. And if I were to take a look at cons for the head, there are four points I want to talk about. First, I wish the tilt drag could go even tighter without having to lock the tilt into place. As you can see, even at max drag, the head will still try to level itself.
but never having used a video tripod head before, perhaps this is normal, and I guess I could always lock the head into place. Which brings me to this tilt lock. For us righties, it would probably be easier to lock the head into place if the lock switch was on the left side rather than on the right. If I needed to lock it while I was filming, I'd have to switch hands in order to reach the knob, which is a bit cumbersome. The third con, and you may have heard it already during my demo, the tilt drag knob makes an odd noise when you're cranking down from max. Sounds a bit like wet glue coming unstuck. And while the sound doesn't really bother me as you'd never hear it while filming unless you're changing the drag mid-shot, it's still a little odd. The good news is, it's a bit quieter now that I've had a day to work it in. And lastly, the pan lock can become entirely loose if you're not careful. And it's something that you could very easily lose. All the other knobs have stops preventing them from falling out, so it's a little unusual. Manfrotto didn't build this feature into this one as well. So be sure to tighten this knob before you transport it. But all in all, these complaints are extremely minor. And to me, they do not detract from the overall build quality, functionality, or smoothness of motion that can be achieved. No matter where this is made, the 502 is built like a rock, and there's absolutely zero play or wobble between any of the components. Originally, I was also looking at Manfrotto's 500 AH head, which is a little bit less expensive, but ultimately does not give you the drag control of the 502. I was able to try out both at my local store, and if you're looking for a great entry-level video tripod head, I definitely recommend spending a little bit more on the 502 to get something that allows for more fine-tuning and a heavier load. It's a video head that I expect will grow with you as you gain more experience. But there's nothing better than testing it out yourself, so if you're unsure, check them out at your local store. Thanks again for watching my unboxing and review of the Manfrotto 502AH Pro Video Head. If you like this video or have any questions, please like, comment, or subscribe below for more tech and prop reviews in the future. Cheers, and have a great day.